country. Four games, they're all at halftime. We'll bring you up to date scores and highlights and Clark 2 in a moment. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Hi, once again, everyone. Welcome to Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with the aforementioned Clark Kellogg. Let's run down what's happened for you so far today. In Memphis, Tennessee, Gonzaga and Virginia. Gonzaga jumped off to a big lead. Virginia came back, and now at halftime, it's a 48-42 lead for the Bulldogs. Off the break, Virginia will grab the lead here. Adam Hall with the pass in the lane, lays it in for two and draws the foul. Cavaliers were up one. But Dan Dickow, he wears number 21. He has 21. Four or five from behind the three-point line, and they lead by six. The winner of this game plays the winner of the Oklahoma-Indiana State game. But... At various times, both these teams have been impressive today. They really have been. Virginia wants to press and turn you over and play a fast-paced game. Gonzaga, one of the highest-scoring teams in the tournament, they don't mind playing fast, although they've turned it over about 11 times in that first half. Dickhouse fun to watch, isn't he? He sure is. He's great at off the dribble and also setting up other people. At the Louisiana Superdome, Temple's Owls lead Texas by a score of 41 to 22 at halftime. Temple's guard Quincy Wadley. Watch him turn around, knock down the three, and Temple led by six. But Darren Kelly going to give Texas an opportunity. Leaves it for Maurice Evans, the throw down and the foul. Temple was only up two there. But then Lynn Greer to Alex Wesby for the three. Temple led by ten, and they maintain the double-digit lead. And the winner of this game plays the winner of Florida, Western Kentucky. And we talked about this game a little earlier today, Clark. Texas tends to be a little erratic at times. We saw it cost them in the Big 12 championship game, and it's cost them so far here today. And it compounds itself when you talk about the defense that Temple plays, and Temple has zero turnovers in the first half. Greg. Gee, a Jan Ch John Chaney team. Imagine that. <laughs> in Kansas City, Butler and Wake Forest are at halftime, and the Bulldogs lead Wake by a score of 43 to 10. Two there. And then watch Miller drive into the lane, kick the ball to Ryland Hangy, who pump fakes, drives, finds Thomas Jackson, top of the key, his three finds the bottom of the net, and Butler leading Wake Forest by a score of 43 to 10. Number 17, Wake Forest, you know they're a better team than this, but what do you do when you're a coach and your team has put 10 points on the board in 20 minutes? Well, Greg, it looks to me like but Wake Forest has lost all confidence. They really struggled late in the year. They don't have one of their key players, Craig Dawson. He's out, and they've just not been able to find any kind of rhythm, and sometimes the ball just does not go in the hole, but give Butler some credit defensively. Not well. only that, though, I'll bet you at halftime, he says the odds are going to start to go our way, and they're going to start to fall in in the second half. Well, they hope so. Okay. In Kansas City, Butler and uh, Wake Forest, 43 to 10. And Northwestern State and Illinois, the Illini lead it by a score of 44 to 29 in Dayton. Watch Frank Williams steal the ball, take it down court, behind the back to Marcus Griffin, jams it home. The Illini led by four. They were up 10 zip to start the game. Beautiful penetration and kick by Williams to Sergio McClain, and he buries the three. 10 zip, Illinois. And then Brian Cook takes advantage. Nice ball movement, hits the open jumper. The Illini lead by a score of 21 to 6 there. Northwestern State made a little bit of a comeback, but Illinois appears to just have way too much. I think that's the case. They've got too many guys that can get it done in too many different ways. All right, those of you who have been watching the game in New Orleans between Temple and Texas, we'll send you back for second half action. We'll continue with the rest of you folks in just a moment. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Welcome back, everyone. Second half action is underway in Dayton, Ohio, between top seed in the Midwest, Illinois, and number 16 seed, Northwestern State. The Illini lead at 46 to 29. Let's take you there live and join Tim Brando and Rick Pitino. Ryan Duplessis, shooting two. For the, the Illini led by 17 at the half by 10, a minute and 40 seconds deep into the game. Northwestern State out of the Southland Conference made a strong move to cut it to 12. And uh, their confidence offensively appeared, Rick, to really pick up in the last 10 minutes of the first half. And it appears to be carrying through here in the early going of the second. They can stay in the game. They just have to create turnovers. They, they're not getting any second chance points off the glass. So they need it off their full court press right now. Thompson on the offensive boards. Myers Dawson, the transfer from Miami, struggling with his perimeter shot. And they needed him to be very effective today. Griffin has been the story inside, and Chris Thompson for Northwestern State has seven. 
Myers Dawson struggling one of four from the floor. Let's take a look at our bracket here in the Midwest region. Illinois, the number one seed, Tennessee and Charlotte, excellent 8 9 game yet to come. Syracuse and Kansas, and I know you feel that uh, Hawaii and Cal State Northridge could represent uh, the mid majors very well this afternoon, much as they did uh, in the opening round yesterday, the mid majors. We all know how well coached Kansas is, and their talent is certainly outstanding, but. After watching Cal State Northridge yesterday, they're going to give Kansas all they can handle. Well, you could say that this was a year in which uh, power conferences, the six elite conferences, got their opportunity. At the same time, Rick, uh, it's the mid-majors that are, are really telling the committee that uh, they can play with some of these elite teams. Well, we all know the problem with the mid-majors is they can't schedule the majors unless you go to the other team's home court. Mid-majors have a 5-8 and eight record in NCAA tournament play to this point and we're early on in day two. Timeout just over four minutes gone in the second half. So Illinois with a 46 to 30 lead on Northwestern State. We remind you of our next wave of games coming your way shortly and among those games most of you will see the game which tips at about 252 Eastern time number 14 seed Western Kentucky against third seed Florida at the Superdome in New Orleans. We thank you for watching singular at the half back to the second halves of your games in just a moment. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. You look at our tournament summary, the Hampton win was huge, and the Pac-10 scoring better than any of the power conferences. How about your picks for the Final Four, Rick? Well, Duke, Maryland, Arizona, and Michigan, and certainly Maryland with that close win yesterday. I'm picking Maryland because they have to face Duke. I believe it's the only team that has a shot against Duke right now the way they're playing. Many times, as uh, Billy Donovan proved, you get measured up early in your opening round game. You get that kind of test. Uh, you can get on a run. It was Butler that did it to him last year. And then after Mike Miller's finger roll, they made it all the way to the Final Four. That type of adversity makes you stronger. You need a close, hard-fought game. Looking at Gary Williams, it was very close to straight jacket time. <laughs> By the way, what, your, your first game in 96 when you won the national title, you remember that one? I believe we were down one at halftime. San Jose, correct? Yes, San Jose State, and Olivia St. Jean. And then we, we wound up winning by a substantial margin in the second half, thankfully for, for me. I believe that was uh, one of those uh, shock treatment halftime stories that you uh, gave to your club. Roberts for three. By the way, speaking of Butler, 43-10 at the half. I don't know that anyone expected uh, Butler not to be in that game, but uh, to be winning by that margin is unbelievable. Cook, his foul third. goes against Brian Cooks. Third. That's the third on him. 43 to 10. It's amazing, isn't it? Here's Byers Dawson in the jump stop. Gives it up. Illinois' defense has just been outstanding. Very difficult to penetrate. And a player control foul is the call. As the charge is taken, Ryan DuPlessis relentlessly taking it inside. As Paul Pierce used to tell me, Coach, I, I got it. You don't have to beat that horse to death. I'm not going to beat this horse to death, but you've got to stop driving into the, into the timber. You have to pass the ball. Three fouls on DuPlessis. You see Krapalia coming into the game for Illinois. Cook takes a seat with a three fouls. Frank Williams leading this Illinois team in every respect, off the floor as well as on. He reminds me of Clyde Frazier. Yeah. He's so calm and collective. He knows where he's at at all times. Propalia missed it. All right. Adds to the offensive rebounding stats. Little Moses Malone. <laughs> throw it up, get it, throw it up, and get it. Here's Thompson. Another offensive foul against Northwestern State. Martin McConley is a little upset with the block charge call today. Believes it's going a little too often against the offensive team. I agree with it. He may not have been totally set, but he initiated the contact and went into the defensive basketball player. I agree with the call. Demon substitution number 40. Mike McConaughey, a son of an All-America at Northwestern State. His dad, John, they called him. His nickname was Opie because he looked like uh, Andy Taylor's son in the old 
Mayberry Show. His, his dad was known as the Hound, Johnny Hound McConathy, back in 1952. Griffin. Why, why the Hound? <laughs> what, why? How did he get that nickname? Because he was a bulldog inside. He just went. He was a power player. His father. I could tell you just made that one up. <laughs> Kripalu <laughs> knocks it away. <laughs> Is the dish once his again is a strong, Team strong fourth. finish. On the other end, Kripalu gets his first foul of the afternoon. Hancock will. Trigger it in. The senior from Kuntz, Texas, just outside the Beaumont area, is Kuntz. And DePlessis making his move inside, and a hold is spotted by Larry Ware. That'll go against Corey the Bradford. You just tell the Illini players when they drive to the basket, they're, they're looking for the assist. And that type of unselfish play makes everybody better. They're all making each other better, and that's what you look for, for from a great basketball team. Roberts left free. Rebound to Frank Williams. You're right, you know, he's, he's so smooth. He's a glider That's out the there, Williams. Williams. Dribbles with his head up, waiting for the man to get open. Wasn't there, overpowered him for an easy bucket. Lead has opened up to 22. Equaling the largest lead of the day for Illinois. And another turnover. Myers Dawson felt uh, he was fouled. Harrington is on the floor now with Griffin. Boy, what, what great perimeter passing we're seeing from this Illini team. Just outstanding. This is what basketball is all about. Let me get an easier one. Let me get an easier one. Good timeout by Coach Mike. The lead catapults to 25. The one-time flying Illini flying the basketball around the perimeter. First round action from the South Region in Memphis. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pyramid. Gonzaga leading Virginia 54 to 51. And just over four minutes gone by here in the second half. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarkle, Brett Haber. And Gonzaga basketball. We'll see if Mason Jr. can continue to slow down Dickow. Inside. Oh, pretty play by Williams from behind. And Cavalry had it knocked away. Here's Williams straight away. Virginia down three. Watson gets a touch. He's been very quiet. And he hits the outside shot. Three fouls for Watson in the first six minutes and change. Limited his floor time, but he now has four points to the rim. Blocking foul as Step took it strong. I think that's a good call, too, because the defender hand slid right underneath. And that'll be number four on him. If you see the drive goes right by Watson, not a factor, continues up. Yeah, see, he's moving a bit. He has not established, and he's moving and trying to draw some contact defensively. One of those decisions there by hand, as you see, four fouls on him. Maybe one you got to pull away right there with plenty of time on the clock, about 15 and a half minutes. And costly. He is their only true point guard that is part of the rotation. Roger Mason Jr. can handle the ball if necessary, but hand is the player that sets the tempo for Virginia as Friel will check in the transfer from Notre Dame. In for hand after picking up his fourth personal foul at the 15-28 mark, second half. And step. Now has eight. So in hand exits, it's a three-point game. We'll see if Gonzaga can take advantage of that. Inside again, same play for Watson. On a fadeaway, off the rim. And Calvary able to bring in the loose ball. Dickow off the misdirection. Hall sticks with him. Hall, another pretty good defensive player for Virginia. They go right out of here. Inside, Violet with a hook. See, I think every time they catch the basketball down there, what Watson within defensive territory, I think you just have to plow your way towards the basket. The prep player of the year from the state of Idaho last year, the freshman Corey Violet, his first deuce. Good ball movement. Hall gets it back inside and over the top. And that's number four on Violet. And you see down the defensive end, this is Watson right here, 35 in white. And I think you just have to keep challenging him because you notice he's really just a body in there. He's putting his hands up. He's trying to stay away for at least another four minutes. Stay away from that fourth foul. 
The starter, Zach Gord, will come back in to replace Violet. And Gord is playing with three personals. Mason to toss it in, and a five-second call. You talk about the frustration, Pete Killen. You know, it's just, what do you do? I got to get the ball in bounds, he's saying. Somebody has to get it in. And Mark Few at the other end, happy with his defensive effort just then from an out-of-bounds set. Here comes a little show of the trap. Tenth Virginia turnover. Dickow on the attack, and Gore couldn't catch it. The simple fundamental things of basketball. Catch the basketball before you try to do something with it. You can access live stats from every tournament game through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. 58-53, Gonzaga leading Virginia. Williams is a nice matchup here, I think, for Virginia. Good with the basketball, force Calvary out on the floor. Here's Williams. Had it knocked away by Hernandez and a steal. Here's Hernandez running the floor and goaltending. Hall pinned it up off the glass. Well executed defensively, I thought. Gonzaga very effective there in shutting down Williams with that little penetration dribble. Ten points for Hernandez and a timeout. 14-10 to play, second half, seven-point game. First of four games in Memphis today, the South region. First round action, and Gonzaga with a seven-point lead on Virginia. The rest of the day looks like this. Oklahoma, Indiana State coming up. A little bit later on tonight, the defending national champion, Michigan State, takes on 16th-seeded Alabama State, their first ever trip into the NCAA tournament, and we'll wrap things up with the 8-9 game. California and Fresno State. Virginia ball, they trail Gonzaga by seven with six minutes gone by in the second half. Donald Hand is on the bench, he the floor have, leader with four fouls. Mason may have gotten poked in the face there in the eye area. Well, maybe in the nose, too. Get a little slap up going for the basketball, inadvertent. Officials didn't catch it. And you see defensively, Hernandez on the other side of the floor flicking up at the basketball. And may have gotten him twice, actually. They resume with 15 to shoot. Mason handling it. And a touch foul on Hernandez way outside. And more importantly, it goes to 16 fouls for them. Coming up Saturday on CBS, a sting operation exposes police corruption. Now the toughest fight against crime is between the cops themselves. Don't miss Craig T. Nelson in the district Saturday on CBS. Here's Mason. Look at him go after the ball, though. And a break opportunity for Gonzaga. Spin to the rim. Hernandez blocked by Hall on the weak side. Good job, though, by Friel just then, also getting his position defensively. That's the reason you get a block. See, Friel comes in and stops him, forces the turn, and now look what happens. Second guy in again. It's usually the second guy who get, gets the block. Calvary, short, but a foul. Still looking for ways to get Calvary involved at the offensive end of the floor. Only two for six so far. Five points. And the third foul on Chris Williams. I think everybody in this building has three fouls or more right now. It's starting to mount up, isn't it? Casey Calvary, his numbers have gotten better every season, but free throws have been a problem. So far this afternoon for him, he's now 0 for 3 from the line. Only 62% on the season, so in a close game, that would be probably a choice that you want to focus on if you're Virginia as this thing wears along. A fiery personality. And a senior history major from Tacoma, Washington. Another local product for this Spokane, Washington Bay school. Good skip pass. Hall gets the step. Athletic couldn't get it to drop. The follow doesn't go. They had two shots at it. Williams and Watson. And they were clear shots also, especially the first drive along the baseline. And that's a basket they needed. Gonzaga can bring it to 10 or 11. Hernandez looks to the interior. Step. Uh -oh. Thought about it and shuffled the feet. Took a step. A little shuffle outside. Indecision there. But Mark View's team making pretty good decisions overall in the second half. Step with the little shuffle out front. We talked about Hand being a key to Virginia's success. Since his fourth personal foul, Gonzaga has gone on a 7-0 run. Mason Jr. a three. Front rim. 
Hernandez tries to push. Virginia has to start getting it going towards the basket again. When you're in trouble, you must start attacking off the dribble and looking down on the blocks. Knocked out of Dickow's hands, but Gonzaga will maintain possession. And now Hand pops off the bench, 12-40 mark. Second half, four personal fouls on the senior. And let's see who he defends. That's the key decision right here. He's going to go after Hernandez. See if Mark Few takes a chance of getting the ball in Hernandez's hand somewhere in the scoring range. Mason Jr. will get a rest. Whoever hand is step now being guarded by him, so he's switching off on all this, the cuts down low. Gord gets it inside. Cavalry trying to save to the wrong team. Here's Virginia on the run. The acceleration, and Hall can't convert. Having their opportunities, unfortunate for Hall. They better get back quickly. Here comes the long one. Hernandez knocks it down for three. Hernandez with some good confidence and a terrific spot up. Find some real estate on the fast break. Get your confidence going. Think shot before the ball arrives. 10-0. Bulldog run. Oh, good hands again defensively. And off the shot clock. Substitution for Virginia. And Virginia will hold on to it. Start running the floor. See what the dribble does. It brings the defender into the middle of the floor. Spot up. Before you even shoot the basketball, you have to have an understanding of the ball's going to come in my direction. Catch and go it usually means pretty good results. Hand gets it in for Hall. We are under 12 minutes to play now. Second half, an 11 point Gonzaga lead, matching their largest cushion. Hall pump fake. Oh, pretty, pretty. He can't get it to drop. Adam Hall continues to struggle from the field. He is 3 of 11. Dick out. Uh-oh. Oh. Followed on a dunk. Interior as Cavalry was able to break free. Big time follow. How about the long range shot, though, by Dick out? The long range shots come off hard. This one comes off soft for the dunk. Timeout. 12-0 run for the Zags. And first of all, in Dayton, Ohio, where Illinois' only concern at this point with five minutes and change to play against Northwestern State is the status of Sergio McClain, who injured his right shin. X-rays were negative. Bill Self probably will not play him anymore today. I'd rather wait until Sunday. I wouldn't expect to see Sergio McClain back on the floor. Illinois up by 30. They've controlled this game from the start, as you would expect a number one seed to do versus a number 16 seed. Illinois very much in charge as they approach the five minute mark and as you said the number one seed in the Midwest took charge from the get go they had two 10 0 runs one to start the game and another midway through the first half and Northwestern State really has not been able to recover Illinois safely in front as time winds down although they continue to control the boards draw fouls score baskets that's the way it's going for the fighting Illini in the Midwest in Kansas City down on them meanwhile in the south in New Orleans Temple and Texas 61 48 as they approach seven minutes to play in regulation you and I were talking about this game a short while ago Temple is a tough team to come back on they really are because they're deliberate and they have good guards and Greer and Wadley but now they've got to make sure they don't start driving the car with the parking brake on there's still an awful lot of time they can't get tentative they've got to be aggressive a trapping half court defense by Texas has allowed them to do this turn the aisles over and then get out in the open court all right Clark we'll keep track of all those games for you meanwhile let's send you back to Memphis Tennessee I 89 52 our score as you look at our game summary just outstanding in every aspect of the game Rick uh, this Illinois team big disparity in assists 23 to 6. Anytime time you see a low number of assists you're looking at a dribble offense rather than a passing offense. As you know we talked with Mike McConaughey prior to the game he felt uh, strategically after looking at some tape that spreading the floor and using maybe the quick first step of his uh, smaller players might be a catalyst but he had to he had to almost get rid of that strategy after the first television timeout. Well it was good strategy it was just an overpowering physical basketball team with the Illini. Edwards is uh, pressured leads to yet another turnover. Propalia off a tremendous speed by Terrence Howard the freshman Bill Self's Pulling all the strings, the maestro of this opening round here in Dayton. Edwards, a young man who seldom plays, gets a shot up. These Northwestern State kids uh, getting to do something no other players have ever done, playing an NCAA tournament game at their school. 
Howard. Too strong. Long rebound control to the Illini. Cross puts it in. Joe Cross from Carbondale, Illinois. And Duplacis is fouled. It's a 12 0 run. And our bracket here in the Midwest region, we're advancing Illinois. I'm not concerned about those late returns in Florida. We're going to put them right in, and they'll be taking on the winner of the Tennessee Charlotte game that will follow. It will be a little more difficult from a physical standpoint in the second round for Illinois, but certainly this is a great confidence builder. Right. Young men that would like to get a little playing time late to Jeremy Pace, DJ Netterville. Coach McConaughey, you know, would love to get them in, get them a taste of an NCAA tournament. Our Chevrolet players of the game are Chris Thompson, does get a double double, 11 points, 11 rebounds, three steals. Frank Williams was outstanding. Certainly was. Chris Thompson's an outstanding senior. At that level of play, you're not going to recruit a better Former basketball Eagles, player than him. BJ and number 55, no question. Pace. And the young walk ons well, for Northwestern North State have an opportunity to come in. Netterville from Zachary, Louisiana, and young Jeremy Pace from Captain Shreve High School in Shreveport, Louisiana. Ninety four fifty four. Howard trying to dump it down to Kripalia. Count it using the glass. You know years from now you see Mike McConaughey now he's able to manage a smile. He knows what it means to these young men just to get this taste. Well Mike McConaughey is a great leader because he'll make his kids feel good in the locker room. They'll be a little down. He'll pick them up. But he, he's a man that's obviously very humble, has a great deal of class, and can flat out coach the game. I know you were impressed with uh, not only the way his assistants uh, handled practice prior to the Winthrop game, but how unselfish he was in the manner in which he he coached the team and allowed his assistants to uh, to be a part of it. I know you feel the same way. Well, they huddled up and, and they would say a prayer before practice. Then they said a prayer after practice. And uh, if I had a son, I'd want him to play for him. Yeah. Nice. Which I do have. I do right. have. You do have a few. <laughs> but none of them really have the ability to play for him. <laughs> there I go. My kids won't talk to me for three weeks. <laughs> Loose ball taken down. Tapped away by Duplessis into the arms of Propolia. And they'll play keep away the last six seconds here. The Illinois fighting the line eye. Win it. The opening round here in Dayton, Ohio, 96 to 54, and for Bill Self, an opportunity to move on and await the winner of the 8-9 matchup between Tennessee and Charlotte. Not a bad start for the Illini. No question about it. The Illini look impressive, but they'll become more physical next time out. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. We take you back to New York and Greg Gumbel. Greg. All right, Tim, thank you. So the top seed in the Midwest, Illinois, knocks off Northwestern State, and they will move on now in the South region. In Memphis, Gonzaga with an 80-75 to 75 lead on Virginia. Let's take you there live. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarkle. 4.23 to play, second half, 80-75, to 75, Gonzaga leading it as Calvary could not complete a three-point play. Virginia has been able to hang around. Gonzaga had a double-digit lead. On a few occasions, 11-point lead, their largest. And Mason Jr. has been a big responsibility for coming back with Virginia. Inside, Watson, early foul trouble has plagued him, but he gets that deuce, and he has six overall. You know, that was a storyline early with Watson. The early fouls, three in the first half, never got on track down low, so they could not establish him offensively, but they're going to look for him as this game progresses now with just under four to go. The freshman step. Puts it on the floor. Hard drive. Dish off. Finds Gord for the dunk. There's where Step takes the pressure off Dickow a little bit with that drive. He saw the opening. He was wide. Real good read going to the basket. Bring the defenders towards him. Freel not a factor defensively. Virginia has scored on its last five possessions. They need a bucket here. Mason a three. Knocks it down. Nothing short of sensational the way he's playing right now. He's matched. Dick out just about bucket for bucket in the afternoon. A good one in Memphis. 3.20 to go, second half. Gonzaga leads by two. Inside, Calvary denied. Gets it back. Good, and the foul. 
you see a little taste of why he's been the, was the player of the year this year in their conference. They're trying to ride him right now. A quiet first half for him. Look at the body position, though. Virginia recognizes. Mason Jr. comes over, and Calvary just stays on it and continues to go after it. And a little bench support to boot. Fourth foul on Chris Williams. Calvary. Will be at the free throw line after this break. 314 to go. It's 84 to 80. Jags. Gonzaga in front, 84 to 80, 314 to play in the second half. And coming up Monday on CBS, what's worse than an annoying father-in-law? Losing your annoying father-in-law. The manhunt begins on an all-new King of Queens, and that's Monday on CBS. The Gonzaga Bulldogs, Sweet 16 last year, Elite 8 the year before. They have been consistent, and they're trying to advance to the second round against Virginia. Calvary, one of five at the line, and his problems continue there. Virginia has to forget about the foul trouble now. They have to just play aggressive basketball. Hand on a kick out. Williams tracks it down as we approach three minutes to go, second half. Here's Mason. They've been riding him offensively. Try to get it to the basket. And a wraparound foul called on Hernandez. And so good off the, the dribble. Mark Few recognizing that, not happy with the call. I think more so maybe not happy with the footwork of his defender just then reaching around. Third foul on the junior college transfer. Eight team fouls on Gonzaga. One and one for Mason. And J.C. Mathis checks back in. Williams heading out. Trying to avoid the extra foul. Pete Gillen working the bench right now. It's all about working the bench, both ends. Mason, 26 points. He shoots it at 88% at the free throw line. He had a stretch this year where he hit on 45 in a row. Virginia, number one in the ACC in free throw shooting. And in a close game, could be the difference. Gonzaga shoots it at 68%. Two point disparity, 254 to play. Back in the South, Gonzaga leads Virginia 84-82. Hopefully the start of a great day here in Memphis. And coming up next here on CBS, first round action continues. Midwest, Charlotte, Tennessee, 243 tip off. The other times are approximate, including Western Kentucky and Florida. And in a close game, Pete Gillen stays with what's got him here. The full court pressure. He's just going to continue to play the rest of this game, just as he does always. Up tempo it, try to make some defensive turnover opportunities for them. And Gonzaga up two. With the ball knocked out of bounds, last touch, Virginia. Shot clock at 25. Gonzags have to still be obviously very aggressive with the basketball, make good decisions, but be aggressive at the offensive end. Dickow taking his time. Gives up his dribble. Here's Step. They'd like to get it down low if they could. Gord is looking for position with Watson playing with four fouls. Calvary. Tough catch. On a kick out, Hernandez. Can't hit it. And it's rebounded by Mason for the moment. Knocked towards the sideline. And Virginia holds on to it. And Mathis continues to be a factor. Just getting loose balls, getting opportunities to give Pete Gillen some extra lives. Virginia down two. We come up on two minutes to go. Give it to him and get out of his way, huh, Mason Jr.? Mason on the perimeter. Oh, Penetration pretty. for the tie. Off the rim. Inside Watson. Spilled to the floor. And it's going the other way. The officials now confirm. It looks like they're going to stay with the call. Unfortunate for Watson right here. He has pretty good opportunity. Just loses the ball because he brings it down. Well, I don't know. Quick one to make the call on just then. They're going to give it back to Virginia, huh? Yeah, they just yeah, changed their mind. Hernandez. So I hesitated a tiny bit right there because it did look like off a blue shirt. So the Cavaliers retain it. Good work from the officials, though. Mathis gives up his dribble. Hall the cutter. Inside Hall on a kick out. And Mason will back it out. Good decision right there. Little ragged just then. An opportunity to turn the ball over, pull it out, and reload. You have 20 seconds to go. Minute 35 on the game clock. Gonzaga up two. Hand. Outside. Mason. Knock 
knocks it down for three, and Virginia leads by one. And Hand with a beautiful skip pass, all the byproduct of driving that ball towards the basket. 30 points for Roger Mason, Jr. And Mark Few will have a chat with his team with a minute 16 to go. Virginia has hung in there throughout the day, and they lead it 85 to 84 late. A one-point Virginia lead with a minute 16 to go, second half. And coming up Tuesday on CBS, fighter jets are falling from the sky. Is it a government conspiracy or an act of terrorism? It's JAG, and you won't want to miss it. Tuesday on CBS. You know, Mark Few right now really has his hands full with decisions. Dickow's got to have the ball in his hands, but I'd look down low, see if they can get the big fella Calvary involved, at least take a look before you settle for anything long range. Gonzaga down one to Virginia. We come up on one minute to go. Dickow. Gord swings it inside. Hernandez. It's been a pleasant surprise. Step. The freshman can't hit the three side rim. And Virginia will be very deliberate here with 50 seconds to play at a one-point lead. Zags just have to stop the defense right now. No need to foul. Virginia's a pretty good free throw shooting team, and they have a couple on the floor that can knock them back. They have to attack, though. They can't just settle back and play it lackadaisical here. You have to go after it. Thirty seconds to go. 85-84 Virginia leading Gonzaga. Mason a three. Off the rim. Offensive rebound. Mathis couldn't hold on to it. And a foul. Big call for Virginia as Mathis, the freshman, was losing the handle. And Zach Gord has just picked up his fourth. Well, Pete Gillen wanted to have the ball in Mason Jr.'s hands. <laughs> so animated. The life of a coach. One and one for J.C. Mathis, youngest player on this team. You're going to make him think about it a little bit. 21.4 to go. Free throws when we return to Memphis in a moment. What we expected in this 5-12 matchup, a one-point game late, 21.4 remaining. You see the game reset. Gonzaga does not want to be thought of as a Cinderella. Sweet 16 last year, Elite 8 the year before. A Mark Few's team right now is down one with Virginia. Having a chance, Pete Gillen's freshman, J.C. Mathis, at the free throw line. One and one. He shoots it at 49%. Both of these teams have been just delivering body blows all afternoon. Nobody could deliver the knockout punch. And Mathis right now has a, an opportunity to give them a little breathing room. Big moment for this young player. In and out on the first. And Gonzaga with the ball. Down one. 17 seconds to go. I think you want to be aggressive with the ball right here. Go towards the basket. And it's Dickow off penetration. Blocked underneath. Cavalry got it to go with nine seconds left. A terrific follow. Just tracked the basketball all the way. And Mason Jr. has to go quickly also. Gonzaga up one. Virginia ball. Mason to the rim. Upstairs. Knocked away. It's over. Forget about Cinderella. Gonzaga once again has proven they are legit. They beat Virginia 86 to 85. Mark Few was confident coming into this basketball game that they could play with the heavyweights, and Pete Gillen walks away a loser. A one point win for Gonzaga. Bulldogs are off to the second round. And a loss for the Cavaliers, their first time back in the tournament since 97. Casey Cavalry had been quiet throughout the day, but he got the most pivotal bucket of the afternoon. Mark Few has his team into the second round in Memphis. What a great game, start to finish. And no one would go away, just a terrific game, as you mentioned, with their team staying with it. Brett Haber standing by with Mark Few. Again, guys. All right, Brett, thank you very much. Mark Few in his second year as the head coach of the Bulldogs. And another NCAA tournament win. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. It's Dan Dickow from Gonzaga, 29 points, five assists. And deadly from three-point range. Roger Mason Jr. had an opportunity at the end, 
He finished with 30, the high man, and the Zags are zigging to the second round where they will meet the winner of Oklahoma, Indiana State, and that game is coming up here in Memphis. An exciting ball game, obviously, just one you just buckle up the last five minutes. I really have to give credit to Mark Few and company, just the way they hung around, because it got a little... Closer than... Memphis, 86-85, it's Gonzaga, a winner over Virginia. For more college hoops, stay with CBS. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. Great start in Memphis. Welcome back to our studios in New York, uh, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg as we uh, continue to travel the road to the Final Four. And uh, you look now at Gonzaga's 86-85 win over the Virginia Cavaliers. You know, both of these with more after this word from your local station. with a dermatologist. Welcome back to our studio. We didn't think we could follow up yesterday, but it's looking that way. Uh, first of all, let's remind you of the games that are coming your way next here on CBS. We're going to start everyone on Charlotte against Tennessee in the Midwest. That game tips at 243. If you're expecting Indiana State and Oklahoma, that game will tip at 258 in the South. If you're looking for Western Kentucky and number three Florida in the South, that game tips at 259. And then Eastern Illinois meets second seed Arizona in the Midwest at 302. The those are the games coming up next here on CBS. What just happened? Well, we're not sure, but let's recap. Gonzaga by one <laughs> over Virginia, 86 to 85. Clark, let's take a look at some highlights. Gonzaga took the lead here on CBS. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you later on at halftime. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship.